As a teacher, I can attest to the eloquence and the power of articulation of Mr. Barr. Yet, there are a few issues that have been trending in the public domain in recent times with respect to EFCC that requires some clarifications. And of course, to which your answer may be a benchmark, even for yourself, as you journey on and you leave office, to be able to say, to be able to say if you have done well. And one of such issues, Mr. Barr, is the issue of asset for future management and disposal. When confirmed as chairman, how do you intend to navigate and tackle this thorny issue in order that the EFCC does not run into trouble with the public? We really have a very good product, a product that we can sell anywhere. And Nigerian will be very happy, will be very delighted to hear from him how he intends to restructure the EFCC so that it can perform optimally. Mr. President, since we are limited to only one question, the only question I will ask is that uh, there is allegation in, in the press and particularly in the social media that the seized and forfeited assets at Port Harcourt were not properly disposed of. And I want your response on this so that the Senate, Nigerians, and indeed the international community will know truly what happened. Mr. President, as I said earlier, we have a good product. We want him to tell Nigerians how he intend to restructure the EFCC. And we really want him to answer as many questions as possible. We don't want that situation where we will tell the nominee, take a ball and go. No. This one is a nomination like no other. Anybody that is familiar with the processes and workings of the EFCC knows that even the executive chairman of the EFCC doesn't have the powers to dispose a single asset. That responsibility lies with the office of the secretary of the commission. I'm saying this, I'm starting from that end to confirm to Nigerians and indeed this chamber that I as zonal head of the EFCC never for once sold a single asset in Port Harcourt. I never did. The then secretary of the commission, together with three directors and other staff from the headquarters, flew into Port Harcourt and disposed of the trucks and other assets in them that were forfeited to the federal government of Nigeria. Sequel to our own singular effort as part of the reformation that I brought to the Port Harcourt Zonal Office. Let me put it on record, uh, uh, Mr. President, the single senator, that when I took over the Port Harcourt Zonal Office in January 2019, the year before, the Zonal Office recorded only 33 convictions. But because of the way we transformed the Zonal Office, we recorded an unprecedented 216 convictions within a year. 216 convictions. We never sold anything in Potako Zonal Office. It was the head office that did everything. We don't know how the payments were made. We don't know who buy. We don't know who lost out in the auction, et cetera, et cetera. That is for the record. And besides the single senators, assuming, assuming we even did that, the EFCC could have been the first to punish me. They could have investigated me. They could have even prosecuted me. But the then director of operations, who was our director of operations, who happens to be the acting chairman of the commission as at now, was the one that even posted me to, to, to Lagos, to head. 
assuming I have something or skeletal or something bad that I did, she couldn't have been thinking of giving me high responsibility to manage the biggest operational base in the EFCC. Confirmation. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Abdul Rashid Bawa as Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC? Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have the nomination of Abdul Rashid Bawa is hereby confirmed as Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Congratulations. <laughs>